Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. Today we'll talk about Cushing Syndrome. And this is the first lecture of a series of three lectures covering this topic. So we're going to start first by screening. So patients may come with a very diverse uh, set of symptoms. They can come with menstrual irregularities, mostly amenorrhea and oligoamenorrhea. They can come with hirsutism, viralization, especially in adrenal tumor. They can come with bruising, stria, especially if it's more than one centimeter, and history of poor wound healing and recurrent fungal infection. They can come with hyperpigmentation, especially in the ectopic ACTH. They can come also with poorly controlled blood sugar if they were diabetic. And central obesity moon phase and buffalo hump, which is the classic symptoms for Cushing syndrome, sleep apnea, and worsening hypertension or resistant hypertension. They can also come with increased hypercoagulability, myopathy, bone loss because osteoporosis is a common finding in Cushing syndrome. It might be the only symptom in subclinical Cushing syndrome. Depression, anxiety, emotional liability, which is underestimated many times, and cataract, an increased intraocular pressure, and increased risk of infection. So as we saw, there is very diverse uh, symptoms related to uh, Cushing uh, syndrome, and we have to keep high index of suspicion to detect uh, those patients so we can provide them with the help as soon as possible. So for the physical exam, you should look for the features of Cushing syndrome, plethora, proximal myopathy, more than one centimeter stria, central obesity, buffalo hump, and also you may need to check the blood pressure to see if there's hypertension. So for the diagnostic approach, First, we have to exclude exogenous steroid use, even a topical one, because it may contribute to the symptoms of Cushing syndrome. If there is no index of suspicion, you need one testing modality is enough to rule out uh, Cushing syndrome. If there is high index of suspicion, you need two or more testing modalities. So the screening test first, low dose dexamethasone suppression test. So the test is either one day test, you give one milligram of dexamethasone at 11 p.m., then you measure at 8 a.m. the cortisol level. If it's suppressed less than 1.8 microgram per deciliter, this rule out Cushing syndrome. The two day test, you give 0.5 dexamethasone, Q6 hours for 8 doses, and measure 2 hours after the last dose. If the cortisol is less than 1.8 microgram per deciliter, it should rule out. So it is the preferred screening test if we have adrenal incident teloma and we want to rule out uh, subclinical Cushing syndrome. And we have a lecture about adrenal incident teloma. Recommended measuring dexamethasone to, to confirm compliance with test. And this is um, expert opinion. Uh, so sometimes you, you give the patient the dexamethasone, they go home, they come uh, next morning, you do uh, the blood work. But ideally, just to confirm that they don't have any trouble with absorption, and if they don't have any trouble with compliance, they took the medication, you might need to measure the dexamethasone test. But this is not like a standard of care. Uh, false positive uh, OCP and the pregnancy, you have to stop uh, oral contraceptive six weeks before the test and the pregnancy. So you have to know this before because you don't want to do the test while the patient on OCPs. 
So there is other screening test we can use. First, late night salivary cortisol. You have to do it probably two times. So the, before the bedtime, better in differentiating uh, pseudo Cushing, uh, and we're gonna talk about pseudo Cushing in the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome, and preferred in pregnancy and epilepsy. There is different values uh, for the reference range, depend on the lab. The other uh, test you can do, late night serum cortisol, it's at 11 p.m. if it's more than 7.5, and you have to repeat it twice. And there is the well-known 24-hour free cortisol, and this is a urine test. It should be three times the upper limit, and the false positive is pseudo Cushing. So it's not good to differentiate uh, pseudo Cushing. As we said, late night salivary cortisol is very good and excellent test to differentiate pseudo Cushing. And there is other ways to differentiate it. We can talk about them later. Dexamethasone does not cross react with cortisol assay. And this is a common question you might even get in your boards because dexamethasone is a steroid, cortisol is a steroid. Does the dexamethasone affect the uh, cortisol assay? The answer is no. So let's say that you already did screening test for suspected Cushing syndrome, and you got back one of the tests positive. Then first step to do next is to rule out physiologic uh, Cushing syndrome, where there is excess cortisol based on a physiologic condition, like pregnancy, chronic alcohol use, obstructive sleep apnea. Then you have to confirm your results from the screening test, and you can do that by the CRH suppression test. CRH will suppress cortisol to less than 1.4 microgram per deciliter if this is not Cushing syndrome, because if the CRH can suppress cortisol, that tells you that the feedback mechanism is working, and this is not a pathological condition where there is uncontrolled production of uh, cortisol. Thank you for listening, and please uh, stay tuned for our next videos regarding the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome and the treatment. Please subscribe and share our content if you like it.